Okay. Keep it down, inshallah. All right. Okay. Alhamdulillah, ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-lambiya'i wal mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillah, we're here at Al Minhao Academy and our uh, monthly uh, family night. Uh, this is a time where the community, we get together, we eat, we enjoy each other's company, we have games for our children, and uh, we take time out of our, you know, one Saturday out of our month to meet uh, as a community. More informal. Uh, meeting inshallah ta'ala and um, before we end the night we always like to have a reminder uh, from our religion and in the continuing with the series that we started with which is the family time with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we take a look at how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam interacted with his family in a more informal way alright so tonight uh, we're going to take a look at a hadith that was mentioned on the authority of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and Aisha had a conversation similar to the conversations that any man would have with his wife sitting at home alone and sometimes women tend to think that as men we are oblivious we don't pay attention I told you that last week I told you this before you don't listen you don't pay attention so the Prophet Sallallahu he wanted to show his wife how much he does pay attention. As sometimes as men, we, we have to remind our wives that we do pay attention. All right, Men and women, we approach things differently. We might listen to a conversation and a woman might say, you didn't hear anything I said. I heard everything you said. I don't have to respond to everything to let you know that I heard it, but I did hear it. All right, I may not be able to run the whole conversation back to you verbatim, but I heard you. I heard you. Um, and uh, men and women both have to understand that we process information differently. Women, when they talk, most of the time, because I know there'll always be an exception to the rule, there'll always be some woman that says, I don't do that. Right? Okay, so there's an exception to the rule for everything. But usually when women talk, they talk to connect emotionally. That's how they communicate. When they talk to one another, they're looking for that response. Wow, really? Oh my gosh, wow, subhanAllah. Right? Because they're, that's their way of connecting. So when women talk, they talk to connect. Men, when we talk, we don't necessarily talk to connect. We talk to solve problems. <laughs> well, see, what you really needed to do with that, or what you need to do is, or what you should do, is, you know, you're just saying that, you just reminded me of something that happened to me when I was younger. Here we go again trying to solve and fix somebody's problem. That's, that's just usually how it goes. And I think the more and more men and women understand each other, the more and more we will allow each other to remain in our lanes without trying to force one another to come outside of their lane. All right, we're uh, pitching, you know, a business venture to our wives and we say, hey, honey, I'm thinking about doing this and that. And she's like, well, um, did you think about this? Did you think about that? And you're like, well, I didn't ask you about the thinking. I just want you to help me get to my destination. But we have to understand that men and women communicate differently. And it's not that one does not hear the other. It just means that sometimes we process differently. So the Prophet Sallallahu on this occasion, he wanted to show his wife that he actually does pay attention. It takes a real type of, a special type of husband to monitor the behavior of his wife and make a connection with the pattern. See, women, they dwell in the mystification of their persona, right? That they believe that they are somehow these mystical creatures that men can't figure out. 
and they hide behind that. What do you know about women? I know more than you think I do. I know more than you think I do. All right, because women they have, and there there is a, a mystification around women, around their personalities, their behaviors. All right, but when you've had a mother, you've grown up around siblings, sisters, and cousins. Uh, you've pretty much been around women for the most majority of your life. You do know a little bit about women, right? Women say they kill me when they say, uh, "What do you know about women?" <laughs> well, I have a mother. I was raised by my mother, right? I have all sisters, right? <laughs> one brother, one younger. I have one younger brother, three sisters, right? On top of being married for a substantial amount of years, I, I think I would know a little bit. I have a daughter, right? I would know just a little bit, just a little bit about women. Nonetheless, uh, the Prophet Wasallam, in this incident, he wanted to let his wife know that he actually does pay attention. And it also shows us how connected the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, excuse me. It also shows how connected the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was to his home. You have some men that are physically there in the home, they're there. They provide a home, they provide food, they're, they're there physically. But emotionally, mentally, they're someplace totally different. And women can feel that. You're not here with me. All right? And the Prophet Wasallam, with all that was on his plate as a prophet, as a messenger, as a companion, as a servant to his Lord, as a father to multiple children and stepchildren, a husband to multiple women, he had a lot on his plate. And in addition to all of that was on his plate, he was still in tune with the women that he was married to. He was able to watch their pattern of behavior and be able to connect the dots. So on one occasion, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said that the Prophet sallallahu said to me, he said, Ya Aisha, inni la a'lamu if kunti alayya radiya wa if anti kunti alayya ghadba. He said, Aisha, I know when you are angry with me, and I know when you are pleased with me. I know. Aisha said to the Prophet Woman, Aina Leka Dharika Ya Rasulullah. And where did you come up with this? Here again, this whole idea that how do you know? Where did you get this from? Right? They like to, you know, revel in the fact that there's some mystery behind their persona or their character. And the moment a man figures them out, then now you, you can't hide behind that anymore. I, I clocked you. I figured you out. I watched you long enough. And it shows you how in tune the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was to his home, to his wives, each wife in particular. Knowing the particulars about that person, what makes them tick, what doesn't, when they're upset, when they're not upset. Some of us as men are so oblivious, we don't know when our wives are upset or not. We just use a, a broad brush and we say, well, she's always angry. <laughs> she's not always angry. <laughs> right? There are times when she are when she's angry, there's times when she's upset, there's times when she's disappointed. And all, although... All of those adjectives sound like they're synonymous. They're actually different. <laughs> Disappointment is different from being upset. Being upset is different than being mad. Being pissed is different than being mad. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like there are levels to that. <laughs> if you've been married long enough, then you're you're able to discern, you know, those levels. There are levels to this thing here, right? They're, they're not all the same. And, you know, it would behoove, you know, the husband that wants good from his marriage um, to understand, you know, when your wife is at this level, when she's at that level, right? When she's at this level, um, because some each level requires a certain type of response from you, all right? Um, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to Aisha, I know when you are angry with me, 
and I know when you are happy with me. And so she said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, woman, Aina laka dharika ya Rasulullah. And where did you get this from? Where did you figure it? How did you figure this out? How did you connect the dots on this one? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he noticed the pattern of behavior. Excuse me. You were the loudest person. Aisha said, and where did you learn this from? Where did you learn this, O Messenger of Allah? And the Prophet Wasallam, he explained to her that he was able to see a pattern of behavior with her. And it was from that pattern of behavior that he was able to identify the times when, in which his wife is upset with him and the times that she is pleased with him. He said that if anti aliyaradia, when you are pleased with me, you say in your conversations, Warabbi la warabbi Muhammad. No, I swear by the Lord of Muhammad. This is Aisha in conversations with other people. She's swearing by the Lord of Muhammad in her conversations. And it was from there the Prophet Wasallam could tell that she's pleased with me. Because she's actually using my name when she's swearing by Allah. She says in conversation, La wa Rabbi Muhammad. No, I swear by the Lord of Muhammad. That is an indication that she is pleased with me. And he wouldn't be able to come up with that unless he knew the opposite, right? As they say, not to get philosophical, but you know, you don't value light until you understand what darkness is, right? You can't understand how much your wife is pleased with you until you know the times that she's angry with you. Then now you have a gauge. Now you have a gauge. He said, and when you are angry with me, if anti aliya ghadba, when you are angry with me, you say in conversations to Kulina, La wa Rabbi Ibrahim. No, I swear by the Lord of Ibrahim. So that means that the Prophet Wasallam is sitting back, listening to his wife have conversations with other people. And here's her say, La wa Rabbi Ibrahim. No, I swear by the Lord of Ibrahim. And he's sitting back and he's saying to himself, well, there are times that she says, I swear by the Lord of Muhammad. And then there are times that she says, I swear by the Lord of Ibrahim. And then I can look at my relationship with her at the times that she says, I swear by the Lord of Muhammad and we're in a good place. And then the times that she says, I swear by the Lord of Ibrahim and we're not in such a good space. <laughs> so he was able to deduce from this, here's a, a conscious husband, right? A conscious, wise husband. He was able to deduce from this, oh, so she's angry with me. <laughs> So when she says, I swear by the Lord of Ibrahim, that means that she doesn't want to mention my name. She's upset with me. She's angry with me. That is how I'm able to discern. Because sometimes women, when they get angry, they don't tell you they're angry. Here again, that mystery. So you got to kind of decode certain behaviors, right? I'm sure every man in here that's married... You can give me one thing that your wife does that is an indication for you that she's upset. Whether she's upset with you or upset with someone else, you know there are certain factors or indicators, right or wrong. I can tell you. I give you the whole list. Facial expressions. <laughs> I can give you the whole rundown. Facial expressions. You know, the sucking of the teeth, the blowing their breath, and, you know, certain things that they do, which are indicators. And they may never say anything. You may say, honey, you okay? And she said, yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> it's like, no, you're not okay. <laughs> you're not okay. How are you going to tell me I'm not okay? I'm okay. I'm fine. It's like, okay. But I just saw you do this. And you do this every single time you end up in this space. So I am able to deduce from that, that every time you get angry, this is one of the things that you do. And that is an indication. So don't sit here and tell me you're not angry. I know you're angry. And it's okay to not be okay. <laughs> right? It's okay not to be okay. Someone says, you okay? Everything all right? And it's okay for you to say, no, everything is not all right. 
but there's nothing you can help me with, so just leave me. And sometimes we have to be okay not being okay. It's okay if someone says, are you all right? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Right? I'm always amazed at like when people have a death in the family, right? You lose a loved one. You're at a janazah. The, the person's death affected you. And then someone comes over saying, you know, you okay? You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. You're not all right. Why would you say that? Just simply say to the person, no, I'm not okay. But inshallah, I'll, I'll be all right later. Right now, I'm not okay. And we have to be, I don't know what the stigma is. It's almost like in our society that you have to wear a mask 24-7. You have to always wear a mask. You have to always give the perception that everything is okay, even though you are at the end of your rope mentally. Emotionally, you are at the end of your rope, and you have to be okay saying to the person, "I'm not okay." It's not something that I, it has nothing to do with you, and it's not really anything that you can do to help me. But I want to be on. I want to be able to be in my authentic self, right? Being able to stand in your authentic space without worrying about being judged. And someone asks you, "Are you okay?" And you say, no, I'm not okay. But inshallah, I will be okay, you know, later on. It's a phase that I got to go through. Nothing that you can necessarily help me with. All right? So this is something that we have to be able to be okay saying to the person that I'm not okay. Saying to the person, I'm all right, even though the person knows that you're not all right. It means that you are avoiding being authentic. And that's, that's not part of our religion. Our religion teaches us to be organic, to be authentic, and to be sincere with everything. Starting with yourself. Being honest with yourself and being honest with those that are around you. That is the, that is the only ground that we can stand on. Truth and honesty. So, the Prophet wasallam, he basically figured out that when Aisha says, no, I swear by the Lord of Ibrahim that she must be upset with me. Because she didn't mention my name. And the Prophet wasallam, he didn't get angry at her for being angry at him. You have some men, we use reverse psychology, right? I used to be very good at this. Your wife is angry at you, and then you supersede her anger with an anger that is even greater to make yourself look like the victim. You have some men that are great at that. This is this reverse psychology, this transference of in a negative energy. So your wife is upset at you, and you're like, well, why are you upset? Well, I'm upset because you did this or you did that. And so you blow up, and you say, well, I don't know why you're always getting upset. You know that that's how, and then you become more angry than she was to overshadow her anger to make yourself look like the victim. And she's looking at you like, well, why in the world are you angry? <laughs> why are you upset? <laughs> I'm the one that was upset, but now you're being upset and you're being anger overshadowed mine. So now you appear to be the victim and I appear to be the bad guy. This is classic, classic reverse psychology. And as men, we really have to stop doing that. We have to be able to stand in our authentic space knowing that our life is not Please with us at that moment. The prophet didn't try to change her. He said, I know when you're angry with me and I know when you're pleased with me. And at the times that she's angry with him, he didn't try to change that. He had to stand in that place of discomfort. Your wife is upset with you. Yeah, we try to change it. Hey, can I bring you some roses? Maybe I can do this to try to help change, you know, the way you feel. Because no man wants to, you know, to, to be confronted with that. Right? The whole house shuts down when your wife is not, is not okay. Right? When she's not happy, nobody in the house is happy. The children are not happy. You are not happy. Your neighbors are not happy. Nobody's happy. Nobody wants that. And it's very, it's very uncomfortable to be in a place knowing that your wife is upset with you. Sometimes it drives us as men to do things just to escape that feeling of discomfort. We don't like the way that feels. And women should be very cautious not to abuse that. 
Not to abuse being angry at your husband for the smallest little things. That when you become angry with your spouse, you use it very, you know, seldomly. And when you do use it, it's impactful. It's effective. It has an impact on the person. Not that you're angry for every little thing. You know, then your anger or your being upset, it runs thin. And it's, you become like the boy who cried wolf. And then when you're really upset for something that is deserving of you being upset, the man doesn't take it serious because you're angry all the time at the smallest, infinitesimal things. And it's not necessary. So don't abuse that. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't try to change Aisha. He said, I know when you're angry with me and I know when you're pleased with me. She said, how? Where did you get this from? He said, because when you're pleased with me in your conversations with other people, you say, I swear by the Lord of Muhammad. And when you are angry with me, you say in your conversations, I swear by the Lord of Ibrahim. Before I move on to the end of this, I, I want to point something else out. Notice who from amongst the prophets Aisha chose. She chose Ibrahim, السلام, who was his great, 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 great grandfather, right? He didn't, she didn't choose, she didn't say, I swear by the Lord of Prophet Nur, I swear by the Lord of Prophet Musa, I swear by the Lord of Prophet Isa, right? She said, I swear by the Lord of Ibrahim. And she used Prophet Ibrahim's name instead of Muhammad's name. So she replaced her husband's name with a prophet that he looked up to. You understand? And it's not that the Prophet ﷺ didn't look up to all of the prophets and messengers. He had a great deal of respect for all of the prophets and messengers, but no doubt about it, Ibrahim's nickname is Abu al-Anbiya, the father of the prophets. You understand? Ibrahim has a station, has a status in our religion. Prophet Abraham has a status in our religion unlike any other prophet. Hence the fact that we mentioned he is the only prophet that we mentioned by name in our salat. Every salat. Allahumma salli ala Ibrahim, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim, wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamidun majid. He's the only prophet out of all of the prophets and messengers. So Aisha using Prophet Ibrahim's name instead of the name of her husband at a time when she's angry. This is strategic. This is smart. Because she didn't want her husband to feel slighted, but she wanted him to know that I'm upset with you. I'm not going to opt for a prophet that you know, you may not have, you may not see as, you know, that great. But she used a prophet that no prophet could, you know, not look at as, as greater than him. And so Aisha using Prophet Ibrahim instead of the name of her husband is very strategic, very smart. All right, very thought out. On top of all of that, it also shows us that, uh, you know, anger, that Aisha being angry with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and a lot of times this anger had a lot of times to do with jealousy. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam excused her, all right? Because as many of the scholars say, or as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another hadith, he said, إِنَّ الْغُيَرَى لَا تُبْسِرُوا أَسْفَلَ الْوَادِي مِنْ أَعْلَاهَا That the jealous woman cannot tell the difference between the bottom of a valley from the top of a valley. They can't tell the difference. Meaning when a woman is severely jealous, her ability to discern who's in front of her, her ability to choose her words wisely, all of those things have been compromised. And the Prophet ﷺ did not hold her accountable. As a matter of fact, Imam Malik, Rahimullah Ta'ala, one of the great scholars of Islam, he said that uh, he held the opinion that if a jealous woman accused her co-wife of adultery, which we know in Islam is a huge sin, al-Muhsanat, it is one of the seven deadly sins in Islam. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Ijtanibu mubiqat." Stay away from seven deadly sins. One of those seven deadly sins 
is for a woman, a chaste woman, a righteous woman to be accused of adultery or fornication. That's a, that's a deadly sin. And sometimes in the position of polygyny, you have some women who may accuse their co-wives of that, of cheating or adultery or infidelity. And Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala said that or held the opinion that if a jealous woman did this to her co-wife, she is not to be punished Islamically. Because the jealous woman, she has no access to the frontal lobe of the brain where you are making sound decisions. She has no access to that. She's been compromised. So if the Prophet sallallahu excused his wife at the times in which she was angry, whether that anger was fueled by jealousy or otherwise, then who are we sometimes when our wives get angry and upset at us not to let them have that space and not to hold them accountable for that? Uh, Aisha, she said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in ending, she said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ajal ya Rasulullah, lakinni la ahjur illa isman. She said, you are absolutely right, O Messenger of Allah. I do boycott, as she said, I do do exactly what you said, but I only boycott your name. La ahjur illa isman. She said, you're right, but I only boycott your name. Meaning, that although I am upset with you, although I am angry with you, I still give you all your rights as a husband. The only thing that I avoid is saying your name. This is a level of maturity that we need to understand as married people, as our communities are made up of married couples. And the only way that we mature is when we understand that it's okay to be upset at me. It's okay to be mad at me. However, what is not okay is for you to transgress the boundaries in, being, in, in justifying your anger. You have a right, you are entitled, and I want sisters to listen to me very clearly. You are entitled to be upset. You are not entitled to let your being upset cause you to transgress against someone else. You are not. You will still be held accountable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And simply saying that I was angry, I was upset, does not excuse you. Aisha said, yes, you're absolutely right, O Messenger of Allah, but I only boycott your name. Meaning, I don't, I don't uh, refuse you know, intimacy with you. I don't refuse to feed you. I don't refuse to sleep in the bed with you. I don't refuse to you know, acknowledge you. I don't refuse to, you know, you have women who you know, resort to many you know, ugly things, atrocious things, right? When they become upset and angry. But there has to be a level of maturity there. She said, yes, I'm upset with you and I'm angry with you. But I only boycott your name. I don't disrespect you. I don't call you out your name. Right? I don't use profanity. Right? I don't tell you to get out. I don't, you know, I don't try to humiliate you. By taking back or reclaiming the things that I may have given you. Well, give me the keys to my car. It's like, all right, so how am I going to get to work tomorrow? You know, I was using your car to get to work, and now you're angry with me, so you're going to take your keys back from me. So how do I get to work tomorrow? I don't know. Figure it out. She's like, wow. This is what your anger has led you to? Is it really that serious? That you're going to take your vehicle back from me, so now i got to catch the bus? Or I got to, you know, ask someone to give me a ride or spend money on an Uber because you're upset with me and you want us. So what are we children now? I don't want to play with you. So I'm taking all of my toys and I'm going to go over into my corner. Right. And I don't want to play with you right now. What are we like? What are we kindergartners? Children? Like, what are we kids? We're adults. Why do we resort to such tactics? Why do we resort to such methods, childish, immature methods, simply because we're angry or we're upset? Aisha said, yes, I'm mad at you, I'm upset with you, but I only boycott your name. That's it. I just don't mention your name. That's it. But I still give you everything that you are entitled to as a Muslim man, as a husband. So, you know, just understanding, you know, as we dissect this hadith, understanding, you know, the relationship 
that was between the Prophet ﷺ and you know his wife Aisha anha, that with all that was on his plate as a prophet, as a messenger, as a husband, as a father, you know, as a companion, you know, as so much as a businessman, quiet is kept. Many people don't know that the Prophet ﷺ was a businessman. He didn't rely on charity. As a matter of fact, he didn't even eat from charity. You remember in the hadith of Salman, Salman and Fadisi was told by the Christian monk that there was going to emerge a prophet in Medina. He described Medina to him. When he finally ended up in Medina, and he, they were pointing out all of the things that you know would make him a prophet. Three things the monk told uh, Salman and Fadisi to look for. He said, how will I know that he's a prophet? Shh, excuse me. He said, how will I know that he's a prophet? He said, number one, he doesn't eat from charity. He doesn't even eat from charity. Meaning if people made donations, he would take those donations and he would donate it to his companions. He and his family did not eat from charity. That was one of the qualities that Salman was told to look for. Number two, he does eat from gifts. If you gave him a personal gift, he, this is for you personally. He would eat from it. He would take it and benefit from it. And number three, the seal of prophethood that was in between his shoulder blades. And these were the three things that Salman and Fadisi was looking for. He, gave, he came unto the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave him a, a basket of dates. He said, here, this is sadaqah. And he wanted to see what he was going to do with it. And the Prophet took the basket of dates and he gave it away to someone else. Salman said, Hada wahida. That's one. And then he came and he gave him a bucket of dates. He said, here, this is for you, a personal gift for you. And the Prophet took one and he, he ate the date. And Salman said, Hadi thaniya. That's number two. And then he was trying to look at the back of the Prophet. When the Prophet realized that Salman was looking for the seal of prophethood, he took off his cloak so that he could see his back. And he saw, and he said, that's three. He said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu an Muhammad Rasul. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, he, he, he didn't even eat from gifts, let alone, uh, didn't eat from charity, let alone, you know, rely on the charity of the community. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a businessman. He made deals, he did business to make sure that his family was taken care of. And along with all of that, we still found that the Prophet ﷺ was in tune with his household. In tune with his household. Some men are in their homes on a daily basis and things are transpiring, things are taking place in their homes and they don't even know. They don't have a clue. So it's important for us, you know, to along with all of the things that, you know, um, that are on us as parents, that we never lose sight of what's going on in our homes and never lose touch with what's going on in our homes and for us to be mature even with our anger to learn and I know that's easier said than done I know I'm sitting from a place of privilege right now because I'm not angry but let's see you when you're angry right and see how you act um, but it's a conditioning process and we, we all have you know we all have to learn that despite the fact that I'm angry and I'm upset that does not justify me that does not justify me doing whatever I want to do because I'm angry and then turn around after I'm done and say, well, I was angry. Well, guess what? That doesn't justify you. That doesn't justify you. So we'll stop here, inshallah ta'ala. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam at kathira. The periscope, inshallah, I'm going to turn you off and turn you back on for uh, a few moments of questions, inshallah.